Hello and welcome to the Sedona training sessions. Um, what we're going to do today is to do a practical HVAC application. Uh, I will show you today how easy it is with the Sedona uh, controllers and with the Six Sense um, uh, kits that have been developed for uh, Sedona controllers to develop a typical HVAC application. What we can see here on, on a screen is a, an example. Let's say that this is an, a, a boiler bond with the three boilers going through the VT um, to the VT loop where we have a twin pumps on a VT circuit. So this is a VT means variable temperature. So we have a weather compensated temperature control uh, modulating a 3.12 valve and then on a primary circuit side we have a twin pumps. Um, how easy would be this program uh, to be to program this with the set on a controllers. So what we're going to do is to have a look at the um, how do we do it. First we run the set on a CPT tool and we connect to the controller. So we now inside the controller and uh, if you remember from any of the last um, training sessions we did the simple uh, thermostat program uh, with uh, also with some BID controls. In this uh, in this time, what we need to do is we need to add another folder. So we go to the system kit on the left hand side, and we drag and drop the folder to STC20G. And what we can now do is I double click the STC20G, and uh, here on on this area we can organize this a little bit better by right clicking and arrange objects vertically. So if I highlight the folder and on the left hand side what I don't seem to have here is a property stat. So how do I do that? I have to go to the here on, on uh, under the file there are a number of uh, areas that needs to be fixed. So I take the properties tab so I can now highlight the properties and I can give that the name uh, let's go call, call it heating. 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 Okay so we have a now uh, part of the controller will do a heating program. So if I double click uh, we now got the wire sheet for the heating program. So, what did we have in a, on our application? What we wanted to do? We had uh, basically three boilers, and we had uh, the VT loop. So let's do first the boiler control. So the boiler control would be that we measure the boiler flow temperature here, and then we modulate the boilers according to the to the requirement. So when the temperature drops, we will modulate the boiler one and boiler two and boiler three. What we also want to do is we want to um, rotate the lead boiler. So let's say in the in, in first week this boiler, the first boiler is the lead boiler and those other ones to follow. And in the second week we uh, uh, start from the second boiler and then on from the third boiler. Why do we do that? Because we uh, want to reduce the wear and tear on the boilers. And that is a very simple way of doing that. Typically in a many BMS system to achieve that is a quite complicated task. But with our Sedona application kits, it is really a simple thing. Okay, so let's do the programming. Go back to the, the CPT tool. And what we're going to do first is bring the, the temperatures into the uh, uh, equation. So we have a couple of inputs. We call it uh, our first input we track and drop, and that's going to be the boiler temp, or let's call it boiler flow. It is on a universal channel 2 on our STC20G controller. It's a resistance type. And then we're going to have another input, which is the, uh, basically the boiler return. And it's, that's, let's say, it's a universal input uh, 3. And it's, again, it's a resistance type. And then we're going to have a outside edge. Well, actually, let's track and drop first the VT temperature. So we have a variable temperature. So VT temp and that would be a channel 4 and then we need an outside air temperature so we're going to bring an outside air temperature for the compensation OAT outside air temperature and that's uh, channel 5 for example so we, what we now have is that we have a four inputs that are connected to temperature sensors which is effectively a resistance that varies according to the temperature on those sensors so what we need to convert now those resistances to a sensors so we bring the sensor object, which in this case is um, from the 6 HVAC kit. So we now we track and drop the, the, uh, the resistance to the sensor object and we highlight that this is PT1000 because we have a PT1000 sensors. 
and we do the same for the, all the other sensors so we can do control C control V control V control V so what we first wanted to do is uh, um, basically do a three boiler sequencing and rotation so that is very simple to do if we go to the six HVAC kits uh, application object libraries. We have a number of objects here. We have a boiler analog sequences, digital sequences, heating curve objects, pump change over objects, etc. All the typical objects that you would need for programming of a HVAC plants. So first of all what we're going to track and drop is a boiler control object. So we track and drop that on a page and we link that uh, boiler flow temperature to that boiler temperature. If I highlight the boiler control object I have a number of properties here. I have a boiler temperature, boiler set point, boost enable, proportional band, and last thing there is a, a boiler demand. We can leave most of them as a default at this stage. And uh, next thing what we're going to do is we have a digital boiler. It's not the analog uh, 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 boilers. We have also object for the analog boilers. So if you have a more fully modulating node than all boilers, we can then um, use that object. So I track and drop the boiler digital sequencer to the page and then link the boiler demand to a boiler demand on that uh, digital uh, boiler sequencer. Highlight the boiler, digital boiler uh, sequence object. Again, you can see there the number of boilers. We actually have a three boilers, so that's, what, that's correct. And here, further down, we can see when do we want to rotate. So let's rotate Sunday, 8 o'clock in the morning, we rotate the boilers. And the next thing what we need to do is to just link that to the digital outputs. So what we're going to do is to go to the FG kit for the controller and take the digital output objects and let's say the boiler one is connected to channel one. So on here on the right hand side, we or let's do the channel two. So that's a boiler boiler one, okay? And then we can do copy paste again. So we do the three boilers here, each of them we're just going to change the physical channel uh, where it's connected, where the boilers are wired. Link the outputs from here to here to here to here. We may want to have that, let's say, that is time controlled, so we run the boilers only on a certain time of the day. So what we could do is we could go to here on the schedule um, kit, which uh, we have loaded into the controller. And if you don't know how to add and load a more functionality in the controller, uh, please refer to video uh, regarding the kits and the backups. If I uh, just to track and drop the, the time schedule, and uh, we are here Wednesday, so it's 8 hours to 20 hours. So that's a Wednesday, so the time schedule is on, so we put that to the actually to the boiler enable input. The next thing what we want to do is we want to control the twin pumps. And let's think about this again. Um, we have a twin primary pumps and let's assume that we even have a flow switch uh, over here so if the uh, when we send the signal to the pumps to ask the boy uh, the pumps to run and if if we don't detect the flow after a while then we um, rotate the pump so we have a basically a, a flow flow failure monitoring in a system so how do we do that so what we do then, in this case, we, we're going to use the, the pump changeover objects. So we just bring the pump changeover object, and on that object we have an input called pumps enable, and we have a, a pressure differential temperature input. So all what we need to do is let's enable the pumps from the same schedule, and then from the I.O. area, again on the left, we're going to bring the output, so we call it the pump one, so we call the pump one, which is, this is a physical output, the digital output where we wire. So we just go there and um, go to, let's say that's a digital output six, and then do a second one, which is pump two, and that's a digital output seven. And we link then pump one output to there, and pump two outputs in here. So now we have a basically a pump pump rotation object used here. So we actually with this object we enable the pumps. And when the pumps run for 14 hours, uh, basically a, a day, then we rotate and uh, the second pump starts on the second day. So we again, we reduce the wear and tear on the pumps. Um, if we have that DPS switch, so what we're going to do is, let's say that's on one of the universal inputs on the controller. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring that universal input on the 
on the screen okay here it is and we saw it that's a DBS and that would be now let's say on the universal input 8 and it's a digital pipe because we have a digital signal so now we're just gonna take the digital output to the DPS input so now we have a done in this part what we have done is we have done a three boiler sequencer with the twin pump control with the lead boiler rotation with the lead pump rotation so we've done a pretty lot of the logic already and it's this straightforward so the last thing what we want to do is to do the uh, basically a VT control so variable temperature control um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to just bring from the again 6 sense HVAC kit it's a straightforward PID proportional integral control loop we're going to link the temperature variable temperature to the measurement on a PID and then we're just going to drive the valve which is a universal output object we track and drop so we say this is the valve and uh, that is on a channel 1 and it's a 0 to 10 volt type valve on the right hand side so we're just going to send the control output into the valve and now we can uh, now we can drive the, the the valve on the on the uh, the controller. So the next thing, so we have a straightforward constant temperature set point for the for the VT loop. So if we go back to the uh, to the, our diagram, currently we would have a, the we monitoring the flow temperature. We have a PID loop here that basically modulates this valve that we try to maintain the temperature on this flow to be the same as on this PID loop as a set point and let's say that's an 80 degrees um, when we have a weather compensation or what we call it variable temperature loop what we then have is we link we compensate that supply water temperature based on the well, based on the, um, the outside air temperature to make sure that the, the water that goes to the radiators in the building is our matching the uh, the required heat because when it gets colder you need more heat and when it gets outside warmer you need less heat and that's that's the sort of a principle of the compensated uh, temperature control variable temperature control and for that uh, to do that, that compensation we have an object called the um, heating curve so what, what that does is that we're just going to take the, the outside air temperature to outside air temperature here and then that object then calculates the set point which is then sent back to the that uh, weather compensated loop so what we now have is a uh, we have a weather compensation if you have a look at the anatomy of this heating object heating ratio object we have outside air temperature we have a heating ratio and um, then we have a uh, other temperatures so if i just delete that line for the for the sake of it that you can see that there is a minus 40 temperature would be coming out now so now the calculated set point has gone to 82 instead of being a 20 so normally the ratio works so that the, um, when outside air temperature is a 20 degrees the basically the, uh, the calculated set point is 20 degrees if then the heating ratio is 3 that means that every degree that outside air temperature drops set point temperature increases by 3 degrees by increasing the ratio amount you can change how quickly the system responds to different temperature temperature drops in a building so if it's, the building isn't very well insulated you normally use a higher ratio if your building is very well insulated you go to ratios like 2.5 with ratio 3 typically you would have a supply temperature set point 82 degrees at the, at the uh, 0 degrees outside which is uh, often used in the UK applications. So, hopefully this gives an, a good insight how to do a, a, basically a three boiler compensated lead boiler rotation and variable temperature loop. As you can see, the programming is really straightforward and simple using the six HVAC objects and our objects libraries. Thank you very much.